In the last episode, I mentioned how important it is to consider having backup power to your tank using recycled lithium ion batteries. I removed the Tesla BMS, added a cell meter, and then balanced two modules by connecting them in parallel. In this episode, I will show you how to add a battery management system, or BMS for short, to the Tesla module. I ordered two of the BMSs from Ally Express on January 10th, but due to the virus I didn't receive it until the 12th of March, which is understandable. Keep in mind these are made to order only, and a typical order usually takes around a month since they are shipped from China. With every order I have received from Ally Express, they came very well packaged and built to last for a very long time. They are also said to be waterproof, although for obvious reasons I have not tested that rumor. I ordered two 100 amp 6S 24 volt common port BMSs. I have to say the connectors they use are very nice, even though I will be chopping these off later. These are 8 pin 7S JST plugs I ordered from Amazon. Since the module has a male plug, I need to add female plugs, and then rewire and join the cell meter plug and the BMS plug. I strip all the wires, and then twist them together prior to soldering. Since I am not using the purple wire on the plug, I remove it by sticking a small screwdriver in this slot, pushing down, and pulling the wire out. These are reversion B modules, and this is the wiring diagram I created. If you have different reversion, click the link in the description to find your wiring diagram. Since a short in these cables could ultimately lead to a possible fire and or totally popping all the fuses on the module, I hot glue the entire plug to reduce wire movement and or possible condensation. Next I move on to prep the cables that go between the BMS and module. I will be using 4 gauge copper cable typically used in car audio installations and 4 gauge copper terminals. Remember those nice looking connectors? Yeah, they're gone. These two cables need to be connected. And in order to do that, I create an opening inside of the BMS cable and insert the 4 gauge cable inside of the opening. Not shown, I solder the two cables together using a mini torch and lots of solder. This is a very rough layout of how the system is presently set up and wired. I will be changing this in the future, so I am just setting this up and testing the system for now. 
I do have two 50 amp breakers between the MPPT solar controller and the inverter. More on this in a future episode. This is the current main ground connection. It consists of three ground cables temporarily bolted together. I will be using a ground distribution block once I receive it. And here is the completed wiring diagram I created. I hope I haven't lost you. I can see how one would be discouraged, but it is actually a lot less complicated than it looks. This entire process only took around 45 minutes. Right after the install, here is what the six individual series of batteries are reading. And if you are wondering, this is a Drock 8S battery voltage tester with low voltage buzzer alarm. I find it more convenient than the Tenergy cell meter being able to see the different voltages from across the room. I would love to hear your feedback. Do you have a battery backup or use a generator in case of a power outage? If so, what are you using and have you needed to use it? Did it last the entire duration of the outage? Also, if you find this video informative, please subscribe and like. In the next episode, we will see how well the BMS balances the series of cells and do a real-time test using the modules, a 24-volt inverter, and the apex on my system.